For years, one of the biggest barriers holding hydrogen back has been the fuel cell itself. Not the idea of the fuel cell, but the actual temperature it runs at. Traditional solid oxide fuel cells, the kind used for high-efficiency hydrogen power generation, operate at temperatures between 700 and 800 degrees Celsius. At those extreme temperatures, everything becomes difficult and expensive. The materials must survive harsh thermal cycles. The systems need bulky insulation. The hardware must be built from specialized ceramics and alloys, and engineers must manage the constant risk of cracking, thermal shock, and degradation. These temperature constraints are one of the key reasons fuel cells have stayed expensive, limited mostly to niche stationary systems, and slow to scale into mainstream adoption. But that may be about to change. Scientists at Kyushu University have demonstrated a new type of fuel cell material that performs efficiently at only 300 degrees Celsius, less than half the temperature of conventional SOFCS. And if this breakthrough scales, it could change hydrogen power forever. The secret behind this new fuel cell is a ceramic material engineered around a phenomenon researchers are calling a scandium superhighway. The team worked with perovskite oxides materials like barium stannate and barium titanate, and heavily doped them with scandium. Instead of slowing ionic movement, scandium actually rearranges the atomic structure in a way that dramatically increases proton conductivity. It creates interconnected pathways that allow protons to move rapidly through the material at far lower temperatures. In other words, the fuel cell no longer needs to be heated to 800 degrees just to get ions moving efficiently. At around 300 degrees Celsius, the material performs with a conductivity comparable to high temperature SOFC electrolytes. That one scientific shift, the ability to move ions at lower temperatures, knocks down nearly every barrier that has held fuel cells back for decades. The first major impact is cost. High temperature S O F C S are expensive because they rely on materials that can withstand extreme heat. Interconnects, seals, gaskets, manifolds, and housings all have to survive 700 to 800 degrees Celsius without warping or cracking. That requires exotic alloys, specialized ceramics, and very thick insulation. But at 300 degrees Celsius, the game changes instantly. Suddenly, stainless steels become viable. Seals can be made from cheaper materials. The entire structure can be lighter, thinner, and simpler. Instead of the fuel cell looking like a high temperature furnace wrapped in heavy insulation, it can start to resemble a compact appliance, a device that is easier to manufacture, easier to ship, easier to install, and far more affordable. Cost has always been the biggest barrier for hydrogen power, and lowering the fuel cell temperature is like lifting the lid off that entire cost structure. Durability also improves in a dramatic way. One of the main problems with high temperature fuel cells is thermal cycling. Every time you heat a ceramic from room temperature to 800 degrees and back, it expands and contracts. Over thousands of cycles, that stress can cause cracking delamination, and performance loss. That is why high temperature SOFCES must start and stop slowly, often taking an hour or more to reach stable operating temperature. At 300 degrees, the temperature swing is much smaller and the risk of thermal damage is drastically reduced. The fuel cell can handle faster startup and shutdown times, survive many more cycles, and maintain performance for longer operational lifetimes. For the first time, a solid oxide fuel cell begins to look like something that could operate dynamically in the real world. Starting when needed, stopping when not, and lasting for years rather than just thousands of hours. Performance matters too, and this breakthrough improves that as well. Fuel cell efficiency isn't bound by heat engine limitations. 
and operating at lower temperatures can actually increase the theoretical maximum electrical efficiency. The scandium-doped material allows protons to move through the electrolyte with less resistance, reducing ohmic losses inside the cell. That means more of the energy in hydrogen is converted into electricity rather than wasted as heat. With lower heat losses and fewer parasitic loads from thermal management systems, overall system efficiency can rise. In stationary applications, this means more electricity per unit of hydrogen. In mobile applications, it means more kilometers per kilogram of fuel. Even the waste heat becomes more manageable and easier to use for combined heat and power systems. The implications for stationary power markets are massive. Imagine a world where homes, apartment buildings, and businesses can install fuel cell generators the way people install heat pumps or electric water heaters. These systems could run quietly on hydrogen or ammonia, providing electricity and hot water with high efficiency and very low emissions. Today's SOF, CS, already do this in limited niches, but their cost and complexity make them difficult to scale. A 300-degree fuel cell changes the economics entirely. It could become a viable clean energy appliance for distributed power. Microgrids could rely on it as a clean, firm power backbone. Remote communities could run on hydrogen-powered systems without the need for diesel generators. Data centers, hospitals, and telecom networks could use low temperature S, O, F, C, S as clean backup generators, reducing dependence on diesel and cutting carbon emissions dramatically. Transportation could see an even more transformative impact. High temperature fuel cells have always been difficult to use in mobile platforms because they are slow to start, extremely hot, heavy, and sensitive to vibration. But at 300 degrees Celsius, those limitations shrink significantly. A low temperature SOFC could serve as a highly efficient range extender for electric trucks, buses, and long haul transport. It could generate electricity continuously while a battery handles acceleration and dynamic loads for long distance trucking where weight and range matter this could be a compelling alternative to massive battery packs. In marine shipping, where hydrogen and ammonia are emerging as clean fuels, a low temperature SOFC could power propulsion or onboard electrical systems far more efficiently than internal combustion engines. Even aviation could benefit, with low temperature SOFCS acting as next-generation auxiliary power units for aircraft, reducing emissions during taxiing and providing ultra-efficient power during flight for non-propulsive systems. Of course, challenges remain. Scandium is not the most abundant or inexpensive element, and the new material relies heavily on scandium doping. Researchers will need to optimize the composition to, to reduce scandium usage or increase supply chain scalability. Long-term durability testing is essential because a fuel cell intended for real-world use must survive years of operation. Scaling from laboratory size samples to industrial scale stack components introduces new hurdles in manufacturing, quality control, and thermal design. And integrating low temperature S, O, F, C, S into full systems, including power electronics, compressors, heat exchangers, and controls requires significant engineering and commercialization work. Breakthrough materials are the starting point, but building commercial systems is the final test. Still, the big picture is clear. This breakthrough represents one of the most important steps in fuel cell science in decades. It attacks the single biggest problem SOFCs have always had, their extremely high operating temperature. Drop that from 800 to 300 degrees, and nearly every other barrier weakens or disappears. Costs come down, durability goes up, startup becomes faster, integration becomes easier. And suddenly, 
SOFCS move from niche devices to versatile energy systems that can fit into buildings, heavy-duty vehicles, ships, clean microgrids, and even hybrid aviation systems. Hydrogen will always face competition from batteries, biofuels, nuclear energy, and other clean technologies. But advancements like this reshuffle the deck. They make hydrogen more efficient, more practical, and more adaptable for the areas where it matters most. Long duration power, heavy transport, industrial heat, and reliable clean baseload energy. If this 300-degree fuel cell material proves scalable and robust, it could become one of those quiet scientific breakthroughs that ends up reshaping the entire energy landscape. Hydrogen's future has always depended on breakthroughs like this. And today, thanks to one new material from a Japanese laboratory, that future looks more achievable than ever.